How old were you during the Vietnam War? Well, Vietnam really started before I was born. Um, I wasn't born until 69, and so I was really young at the, at the end of the war, 74, 75. So I, I remember just snippets of stuff that, you know, we watch on the news, come home, parents turn TV on, news is on, they're droning on about how many soldiers are dead that day, or um, what happened in Vietnam that day, and not that I understood any of it, or very much of it, but, I mean, it was a topic of the day, back, back when I was little. Where were you during the Vietnam War? I was here, I was born and raised here. Uh, here in Eureka, in Arkansas, and uh, that's where I was. Did it at all affect you or your family at the time? Uh, not that I... I mean, I was five years old, and there were relatives and friends of family members and stuff that were that went to Vietnam, some of them lost their lives in Vietnam. Um, it affected them a lot more than it affected me because we, you know, I was just a kid. And my parents, my dad didn't go to Vietnam. He was too old to have gone to Vietnam. Um, but no, it didn't, I mean, other than watch, sitting and watching the news every night and hearing what was going on in Vietnam, um, it didn't really affect us. Did it have any long-term effects on you or your family? Uh, no. I mean, it, it affected a lot of people um, back then. But as far as, like, personally affecting me and my family at the time, no, not that I can remember. What is your most memorable thing about the Vietnam War? Right at the end of the war, when they were leaving Saigon, when America was bugging out of Saigon, which is the major city there in South Vietnam, um, I remember watching the news, and helicopters would land on aircraft carriers, and they would push the helicopter out into the ocean, and other copters make room for other copters to land, and when they landed, they'd get the people off those copters, and they'd push those choppers out into the ocean. I just remember looking at that, not really knowing what was going on, but knowing that that wasn't good, that there was something bad happening, and it wasn't, this wasn't uh, uh, a ticker tape parade moment, you know? This wasn't a celebration. This was, uh, this was bad news. How old were you during World War II? World War II began December the 7th, 1941, and I was five years old. Where were you during World War II? When the war began, my family and I lived in Mountain View, Arkansas. Uh, I was a preschooler. We didn't have a kindergarten. I was five years old. We didn't have a kindergarten. But uh, the following September, I started first grade in Mountain View, Arkansas. Uh, during that first grade period of time, my father's job moved us to Searcy, Arkansas. And I was in first grade at that time. We moved right at the end of that school year. Like in uh, April, we moved to Searcy. And we lived in Searcy for the rest of my school career until college. And so as far as World War II is concerned, we lived in Searcy all the rest of World War II. And I don't know where that answered all your questions. <laughs> um, how did it affect you or your family at the time? Well, it affected it, uh, my family and every family of everybody that I knew at the time. Uh, to explain a little bit of why that is, uh, when World War II began, virtually every male in the family, the adult male in every family that I knew, uh, volunteered for the military service to go to war. And of course, being five or six years old, I, would, I didn't know what was going on, really. I didn't know they were going to war, but what's that? You know, when you're, you're and uh, the 
I, d I didn't really understand what it's all about, but I knew all the uh, everybody else's father, but mine was leaving, and uh, and so uh, I didn't I didn't wonder why my father wasn't. But to explain that, my father was uh, one of two men in the whole county that were power uh, power service men. They were uh, one of the only two people that kept all the lights on in the whole county, and uh, there was nobody. So when it come time for them. To, they tried to join both of them, and the military wouldn't take them because they said they had critical occupations and they wouldn't take them. So neither of them were, they were taken. And so it affected them in that sense. Uh, it affected my family in that sense, and that I, my dad and this, uh, his, his partner, her name was Glenn Hinkle, uh, my dad and Glenn were about the only men left in town after the war started. So, uh, I mean, adult men. Uh, because it's all, unless they were old, you know, unless they were beyond 45, well, because they wouldn't take them, they would let them volunteer if they were over 45 also at that time. So, but uh, you want to continue on as the war went on, or you want to? Sure. Okay, okay. Uh, as, as the war went on, things happened, uh, uh, and then they uh, actually in 1940, Three, they started the draft, which uh, which uh, uh, boys over they became 18 years old. They had to register for the draft, and and then within within a year or so, they were actually drafted boys that, that uh, didn't have didn't that, that, that were exempt. Uh, and so because they had, they'd run out of volunteers, so they weren't. But but again, uh, when my dad was called up to the draft. He was excused for the same reason because he was still, he was still one of two linemen there in that county, and they didn't they didn't take him. So my dad never was affected even by the draft. But uh, the war then went on until uh, December the seventh. Uh, no, no, December the seventh was the beginning. It was uh, August of 1945, and. Uh, the main thing I remember about that, I was nine years old, the main thing I remember about that was the massive celebrations that went on in every town in America, I guess. Uh, it went on in the town I lived in, just a small town. Sarcy, Arkansas at that time was about 3,000 people. Uh, and uh, everybody was, you know, and the guys were all beginning to just come at home and everything. So everybody was, everybody, it was a real exciting time, real exciting time. How did it affect you or your family throughout the rest of your life? Well, it not only affected me and my family, it affected you. It's, it's like a lot of other experiences that you have. If it had not happened just the way it happened, your whole life would be different. There are thousands of things if you just think about it. Uh, if you just think about any one thing that is significant that... that that if it hadn't happened just the way it happened, would your your life would have been changed and your family's life would have been changed too. And that was the same way with with this war, uh, and and the people that we knew and the, and the, uh, things that happened in school. I remember during school we had uh, uh, our, all during my school years, uh, even after the war for that matter. Uh, our first class in school was a patriotic class. We went, we went and sang patriotic songs in, a, in an auditorium and and pledged the flag and sang Christian songs and and things like it's not done anymore. But that's what it was done then. And yes, that affected my life. Uh, just to, as I say, but there's no way that you could live through that that. Uh, even as a child, really, and it not affected your life later on because it affects how you think about other people in other countries. And sometimes you have to make some adjustments about opinions that you form uh, during times like that. But yes, it, it affects how you, how, you, how you feel toward other people and probably how they feel toward you too. What was the most memorable thing of World War II for you? Pardon me? What was the most memorable thing of World War II for you? 
probably the bombing of Nagasaki and, and Hiroshima because I was old enough to know at that time uh, what it meant. Uh, a little a year or two earlier than that, I wouldn't have known. However, uh, I had heard about the atomic bomb. We had, uh, not, not, it, it was uh, more like uh, live rumors. We didn't know whether it was true or not, but we had heard uh, that they were exploding massive bombs in uh, New Mexico. Uh, and in the desert of New Mexico, we had heard about the massive bomb that like no one had ever heard of before, no one ever seen before. So we heard some scuttlebutt, but we didn't know really what it meant until, until they, they started showing pictures. Uh, actually, the pictures came back in the theaters. They didn't have TV. Uh, so the pictures that we saw came back in the theaters and had pictures of the bombs going off and the, the first off the planes taking off and going there. And then the, and the bombs going off the, the Nagasaki and then Hiroshima. And so, the, yeah, that's probably because that was just something that unbelievable, unbelievable. You know, you drop one bomb that destroys hundreds of thousands of people in a whole big city, you know. Uh, that uh, that was uh, that, that was probably the most yeah single thing about the war was those bombs. Was is there anything else you'd like to elaborate on that you just remember or any stories? Or I really don't remember a whole lot about. Uh, we uh, I remember the times you know that we we had uh, everybody during the war we had. Uh, Everybody's not. It wasn't just my family, but everybody saved. Every, nobody threw anything away. You didn't throw anything, paper away. We saved. We saved balls of tin foil, uh, balls. Yeah, balls of, like chewing gum wrappers and everything. Anything that had any metal in it at all, you saved. You didn't throw. Everything was saved and put back into the war effort. I remember we had an old uh, jailhouse in, in uh, Searcy that had been retired. They built a new jail, and they had an old jail that. They, we, uh, uh, I was in the Cub Scouts at the time, uh, and then the Boy Scouts a little, a little later, but at the time I was in the Cub Scouts, and we went around collecting, gathering up, uh, uh, all over town, gathering up people's newspapers, and we filled that jailhouse full of floor to ceiling, every room, every cell was full of newspapers that they took in and uh, recycled, like, and put them into the, went into the war effort. But everybody said, it's, it's, it, 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 it was kind of impressive, the stuff that they, all that stuff they had, uh, that that they, they re, a lot of people recycle now. But it was the effort nowadays was nothing like it was then because nobody threw anything away. If you if you wore out a pair of pants, you didn't throw them away. They recycled them. They, you know, you, you you didn't throw worn out clothes away. You wore your shoes out, they got recycled. You got, you know. So yes, that was that was that's all. Although I was a child, I still remember it. Uh, you didn't. You didn't. Nobody. Nobody ever disposed of anything. Are there any stories of like that you may not remember during the time, but that like you had uh, have heard over time, like from your parents or other people about World War Two? I I really can't think of anything. I remember. Uh, I remember. Uh, something that had nothing to do with the war, but it happened during that time. It was impressive because it involved my father in the situation. Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you, and you can screen this out if you don't want it. <laughs> Back when we still, when we lived in, in Mountain View, Arkansas, and that was I was five years old. Uh, and my dad was, uh, and my dad and Glenn Hinkle were the only pole climbing. That's when, that's when the guy, they didn't have these bucket trucks, so they actually put, Cleats on their feet and climbed the poles. People, people, anybody at Bob's age probably remember when they did that. And, yeah. and, but, but anyhow, that's the way the linemen did. They climbed, actually climbed the poles. Uh, <clears throat> but but anyhow, Dad and Glenn were somewhere out in the county. Uh, they weren't they weren't at Mountain View, and all the power of Mountain View went out. They had a, a, a central. Uh, 
big pole transformer is what I'm trying to word I'm looking for. A huge big transformer there at the edge of town that controlled all or most of the power that went in, you know, all over the whole little town, little small town, but, but uh, anyhow, that, that something happened to that transformer and it went out. And uh, again, this was before the days that they had radios uh, in their trucks, so they couldn't get a hold of Dad or Glenn, either one, and they weren't together at that day, but anyhow, they couldn't get a hold of either one of them to come do it, so they, they, uh, the main office of the power company was in Batesville, which is about 35 miles from Mountain View, 30, 35 miles in those days, 35 miles of gravel road. So they got a hold of uh, somebody in Batesville, and they sent a lineman from Batesville over there, and the guy climbed for a guy climbed up the pole. He got to the got top of the pole and touched the wrong wire and knocked him off. He got 7,000 volts, knocked him off the pole, and he fell to the ground and killed him. Well, they didn't know what they were going to do. They still couldn't they know what they still to anyhow. Uh, they got a hold of the people at Baseball. They sent another lineman up there, and uh, he this guy came, and he, he got... Meantime, they'd gotten rid of this guy's butt. He climbed up the pole and apparently got a hold of the same wire. And he got, uh, he, he had himself strapped to the pole so it didn't knock him him off, but it, he, had, he had it strapped around the pole right. and he slid down the pole with the strap holding it and it, and, uh, it didn't kill him. But he was, of course, he got 7,000 volts. He was, he was bad hurt. So anyhow, that was two guys in that got knocked off that pole. Well, just shortly after that, well, Dad and Glenn came back to town. And by that time, the whole town was out there. They had the whole town out there at this pole wanting to wait and see who's going to get knocked off of it the next time. <laughs> and my mother was there, and, my, and of course, my brothers and I were there. And, and Dad and Glenn got back to town, and... And they start, they started, well, one of y'all got to go up the pole. And Glenn's wife said, he's not going. He quits. <laughs> and, and my dad says, well, I'll go up there. No, that's, that's not that dangerous. He said, I can see what the old guys. He said, they just, they just got up there and stuck their hand in the wrong wire. And, he, and so my mother was down this just begging him not to go. Don't you go up there. You're going to get on, you know. Mother was crying. And, and dad says, Dad says, Claire, hush up. Everything's all right. I'm going to go up there and take care of it. He climbed up the pole and it really wasn't. He wasn't up there 30 seconds. He got the thing put, put back together. He didn't get shocked. But he came back down the pole. And so that day, I remember what I remember about that was my dad was a hero that day. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought of my dad as a hero for a long time. For a long time. I still do for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you some more, but World War II, is, that's, I can't tell you much more about World War II because I don't, if, some, if something happened that made me recall some memories, I probably had no more, but I can't think of anything right now just off the cuff. Okay, thank you. How old were you during 9-11? I was five years old. Where were you? I was at home in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. How did it affect you and your family at the time? Well, I was so young that I don't really remember a lot of the effects that a lot of adults probably do. But as far as the rest of my life, increased national, national security and hearing about it in school all the time, Things like that. What is the most memorable thing about 9-11 to you? Mm, probably talking to my teacher about it, everybody at school, asking if she saw it. Is there any personal experiences you have had from heightened security? Well, when I was going up to New York to visit a college just last December, I was going through airport security and my jeans set the metal detector off so I had to get my hands tested for explosive residue and for whatever reason they went off that went off 
So I got taken to the back and interrogated and had to have my luggage checked and pat downs and I just got asked a lot of questions and then I was released to go back on my flight. But they said that the airport soap tends to set it off and I just washed my hands. Thank you.